Amen. Amen. Praise God. We are here. I'm Dr. Alicia Williams and welcome to our Sunday School Hour. It's always a blessing to um, uh, have our worship a little bit before we get into God's Word. And I thank God for that time to, to, um, to rest in His worship, to rest in, 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 in praise and, and, and glory and honor in Him. And so this morning we go right into our Sunday School Hour. We already know we're in our summer quarter, and um, this is our Sunday School resource that we're using. It is the Standard Lesson Commentary, and we're studying um, out of the NIV, the New International Version. So in the summer quarter, the theme for the summer quarter is Confident Hope. And so um, over the, the last couple of weeks, we've talked about fear, we've talked about worry, um, we talked about healing. And so this morning, the Lord is leading us in our Sunday School Hour, and the title of our Sunday School lesson is Rescued from Doubt. In our uh, devotional reading, as well as in our um, background scripture, it shares with us about doubt. And um, as I was reading the devotional reading this week, one of the verses, and I wanted to share this with you, I made a note in, in the Sunday School book, I wanted to share with you one of the verses in Isaiah 38 that uh, stood out to me, and that was verse 38. When you read verse 38, it says, love backed my life. And, and I love how the Lord um, allow us to have or encourages us to read our devotional reading so that in our devotional reading, it brings us, I, I believe that it prepares our spirit um, um, for our Sunday school lesson and for our Sunday school hour. And as I was, was reading the devotion, that verse, verse 17, 17 out of Isaiah 38 really just hit home to me that it everything that we read in God's word everything that we study in God's word God is ministering to our minds and to our hearts and to our soul that we're made whole and complete in him and when when I said that verse 17 really stood out to me we're just going to take a few minutes uh, for the sake of time we want to get right into our lesson but verse 17 and I'm going to read it from the Amplified Translation. So the NIV is going to re read a little different. But the Amplified Translation um, in Isaiah 38 says, Indeed, it was for my own well-being that I had such bitterness. But you have loved back my life from the pit of nothingness, destruction. For you have cast all my sins behind your back. When you read that, when I read that in Isaiah 38 for our devotional reading, it just reminded me of how thick and how rich and how deep and how wide God's love is for us. And so I believe that that prepares us to go into our Sunday school lesson. That prepares us to read and to study this morning about rescue from doubt. And as always, I like to um, welcome you and, and um, share with you a little bit about what we're going to be studying. This is our roadmap. This is our lesson agenda, Rescue from Doubt. And our, of course, we already know our devotional reading for, for last week was Isaiah 38. And our background scripture for today is coming from Matthew 14. Our lesson aims this morning is to identify common elements between this lesson text and that of lesson two. And if we remember, lesson two was about being delivered from fear. We remember what lesson two was about. Lesson two was about fear. And I think that um, when the Lord was ministering in lesson two about being delivered from fear, I believe that lesson really was um, helping us to be prepared for this lesson that we're studying this morning, being rescued from doubt. I love this lesson this morning because this lesson is true to form. This lesson is true to heart. It really ministers to us as human beings and, and, and where we are and where we can be at times in this life that the Lord has entrusted to us. And so our first lesson name, identify common elements between this lesson, 
Rescue from Doubt, and uh, Lesson 2, which was Delivered from Fear. And then um, our second lesson aim will be Explain the Relationship Between Fear and Doubt. And then third, um, our Sunday School lesson is encouraging us to develop a step-by-step -step plan to replace doubt with trust in one area of spiritual weakness. And so um, God is a wholesome God and God's design and God's desire is that we be made whole. And so when we talk about replacing doubt with trust, allow the Lord to minister to you in what area it may be, <clears throat> excuse me, with your weight. It may be with your relationships. It may be with your finances. It may be with your health. Whatever the Lord ministers to you about, taking the necessary steps and developing a step-by-step -step plan to replace doubt with trust. When we read our Sunday school scriptures and we read our Sunday school lesson, we'll come to understand that when we replace doubt with trust, we honor and we glorify God and we please God. And we want to be pleasing to God. We want to be pleasing in God's sight. And so our scripture reading for our Sunday school lesson is coming from Matthew 14, verses 22 through 33. We're going to go into our activity page. And of course, for the sake of time, we'll go straight into our lesson, um, um, our activity page answers. And I'm really excited about our activity page this morning. It was very fun. It was very exciting. I'm not sure if you had the opportunity to complete it or finish it. But um, the activity page this morning is going to be very, very exciting. We'll recap. We'll talk about whether or not if, if this lesson, uh, reading in our Sunday School book, enabled us to uh, meet and complete our lesson aims. We'll talk real briefly about what our Sunday School Hour will be about next week. And of course, we know next week we're going to be in a new month. And so we honor and praise, praise God for that. We'll talk about our weekly announcements and then we'll go into our closing prayer. And so I just want to say welcome and thank you for being here with us in and with me here in this Sunday School Hour. Our key verse this morning for our Sunday School lesson is coming from Matthew 14, verse 31. And Matthew 14, 31 reads, and this is the NIV, this is the New Inter International Version. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? I'm glad that this was uh, selected as our key verse. And the reason behind that is because it reminds us that we're human and reminds us that God knows that we're human and that we need help. And um, our faith at times grow weak. Our strength um, at time grows weak. And um, as we'll see in our Sunday school reading, that even the disciples, those that were physically with Jesus, those that were eyewitnesses to the miracle signs and wonders, their faith grew weak. But God is still God and God is still on the throne. And we think. Thank God for being who he is in our lives and for us and in us and through us and by us. Because without him, Lord, have mercy. And so that takes us into our lesson aims uh, real briefly. Of course, this morning, our aim is to identify common elements between this lesson text, which is rescue from doubt, and uh, that of lesson two, which is delivered from fear. And then our second lesson aim is to explain the relationship between fear and doubt. And, and we're, we're reading this this morning. We're studying this. We'll read about this in our Sunday school book. But this is really for us to take to heart. You know, um, as we read and as we study in our Sunday school hour, I believe God's desire and God's design is that we not only read and study in the Sunday school hour, but what the Lord is ministering to us in our Sunday school hour that we exercise it, that we, 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 we become what the Lord is ministering. So the Lord is ministering to us this morning about being rescued from doubt. And so we're going to explain the relationship between fear and doubt. I believe that's important to know and to be aware of and understand. And then we're going to talk about real briefly developing a step-by-step -step plan to replace doubt with trust in one area of spiritual weakness. And I think as we read God's scripture this morning, as we read in our Sunday school hour, that's going to help us to be mindful about what steps 
um, that we can take, what steps that we can plan and use to replace doubt with trust. And so before we get into reading our scripture this morning, I do want to, as always, uh, read a little bit from our Sunday School book so that we are what I call brought up to speed or brought up to snuff with um, why we're reading this particular passage of scripture this morning as it pertains to our Sunday School lesson, Rescue, a Rescue from Doubt, and what this passage of scripture, um, the, the, the gist of this passage of scripture and the gist of um, what this lesson is about. And so our Sunday School book reads to us this morning, Mark, Matthew, and John replace the account of today's text um, and it's, it's, it's absent in Luke, so you won't see this account in Luke. After um, of the feeding of the 5,000, Mark chapter 6 and John chapter 6 are the parallel accounts of today's text. And so I wanted to share that. So just in case you want to go back and read the parallel accounts about what we're studying this morning. And so um, that event what we're, what we're about to read in scripture this morning had astonished and excited the large crowd of followers, not just because it was a great miracle, but because it reminded them of God's miraculous provision of food in the wilderness during the exodus from Egypt in Moses' time. You can read about that in Exodus 16. Knowing that the prophets promised a coming deliverance like the exodus, and uh, that promise is found in Isaiah 40. The crowds wondered and um, their excitement were on the rise because it was God man made manifest. It was God made tangible in their hearts and their minds. They were able to see it. They were able to feel it. They were able to experience it. And I thank God for that this morning. The Sunday School lesson says Jesus took steps to quiet this enthusiasm. Yes, he was indeed the true king promised by God, the one who would bring freedom to God's people as God did in the Exodus. But how he became king, how he freed people was yet to come in his death and resurrection. Only then would any of his followers be, they members of the 12 or the crowds, be able to understand and respond to him with greater comprehension of the truth, the truth that he is um, king, the truth that he is the son of God. And, and so Jesus's power, the Sunday school book reads, was very much on display in that feeding, but so was the disciples' limitation in their thinking. And you can read about that um, in Matthew chapter 14 verses 15 through 17. Now those verses aren't printed in our Sunday school text, but again, we're reading this to bring us up to speed with what we're um, encountering in our scripture reading this morning. The Sunday school book says, even though it was by then the third year of Jesus's public ministry, the disciples were witnesses to these events, which should have inspired confidence in Jesus. Their challenge was to respond to disappointment, opposition, and danger with faith in Jesus, knowing that his power could overcome every difficulty. But each new threat presented a new occasion to question whether Jesus was worthy of their trust. This morning in reading um, this out of our Sunday School book, it's reminded me of how important and how precious trust in God is and trust in, in um, who Jesus is um, and, and not just reading it, but understanding it and living it and possessing it um, is, 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 is a blessing and an honor from God. So anyway, our Sunday School lesson book reads, our lesson is set on the Sea of Galilee. Um, and this is similar to what we read about in lesson two. Um, in our Sunday school book, um, in our in our lesson in lesson two, it reminded us that in 1986 the remains of a boat from the time of Jesus was uh, discovered buried in mud near the shore of the Sea of Galilee, excavated and now on display um, 
uh, it reminded us that the boat is probably um, uh, typical for that time and, and, and that it measured 27 feet in length and 7.5 feet at its width point. It could have paralleled, um, excuse me, it could have been propelled with oars, a sail, or both. Such boats were quite safe when the weather was fine, but storms can arise quickly on that lake because its western coastline features steep hills. A storm blowing in from that direction from the Mediterranean Sea might be seen by boaters only when it is nearly upon them. A small boat hit by high winds is in a perilous condition even on such a small lake. So this is kind of giving us a gist of where we're going in our scripture reading. And so with that being said, let us go ahead and get right into our scripture reading. Matthew 14, starting at verse 22. And it reads, Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. Verse 23, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. Verse 24, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. So reading the scripture, we understand why it's important to um um, understand what the disciples are currently facing and where we're at in our scripture text. Right now, we understand that they are on the Sea of Galilee. We understand the type of boat that they're in. We have we have an understanding of the type of boat that they're in. And now we know that they're being buffeted by waves and, and, and that um, the waves were against them and against that small boat. And so, this gives us an idea of the condition that the disciples are in without Jesus. Um, and, and this is a familiar story. This is a familiar um, scripture that, that we've learned um, over the years and, and read about. But I like how the Sunday School lesson unfolds it for us this morning in a deeper way. And so what I'd like to do is take a few moments to read what our Sunday School book shares with us specifically about these verses, verses 22 through 24. And the Sunday School book says, There is no record here of Jesus' providing the disciples with information about how he would catch up to them later after he traveled alone. Though it's possible that Jesus would walk around the lake, more likely the disciples expected him to catch a ride in a different boat. He also dismissed the crowd in order to be alone. Verse 23, though Jesus had previously taught about prayer in Matthew 6, this is the first instance in which we see Jesus at prayer in Matthew's gospel. Later, Jesus prayed repeatedly the night before his death in Matthew uh, chapter 26. Each of the other gospels also bear witness to Jesus' prayer life. Mark 1, Luke 5, and John 17, etc. It is a remarkable part of this story that Jesus, who embodies and exercises the almighty power of God, nevertheless prays earnestly and at length to God the Father. This is critical to our understanding of Jesus. I want to read that again. This is critical to our understanding of Jesus. I believe it goes without saying that if, and you know, you hear the, 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 the saying all the time, if Jesus, who was the Son of God, if Jesus, who as our Sunday school, school lesson shares with us, Jesus, who embodied and exercised the almighty power of God the Father, then how much more should we pray? How much more should we be in prayer? How much um, more should prayer be of grave essence um, and grave importance to us here. Um, so anyhow, the Sunday School lesson says, this is critical to our understanding of Jesus. And and, and I think it was important to, to read that and reread that so that we put in our spirits, in our hearts, in our minds, an exclamation mark to, 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 to allow the Lord to allow prayer and, 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 and to, to 
um, to develop and continue to develop um, uh, 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 an earnest prayer life. And so the Sunday School book says he was the divine son of God to whom all authority had been given. And that's in Matthew 28. He does mighty deeds at, that demonstrate a power that belong only to God. Yet Jesus entered the world in submission to the Father. The Father's will must prevail. Jesus is the perfect model of humanity's desired submission to and reliance on God. Of Jesus the Almighty, Son of God, willingly submitted to God the Father, then how much more should we, lacking in Jesus' power and authority, do the same. I really appreciate this reminder this morning um, because we know that sometimes this road in life gets tough. And and um, I've come to find out and I've grown and matured to the place where um, I honor God and I thank him for prayer. I thank him for mine to pray and, and to have a resolve and have a confidence and have a gratefulness for the ability to pray and for for a reach and a desire and a longing to pray and to be in prayer. And I thank God for it. And so I encourage um, that revelation. I encourage that place in the Lord with you and in you. And so the Sunday School book continues. It says the fact that Jesus was alone indicates that he was successful in persuading everyone to depart, most by foot homeward. The twelve by boat. Night came as Jesus was left by himself. Any trouble on the boat would be compounded by the darkness now settling over the Sea of Galilee. So we understand that the disciples are on a boat without Jesus in the midst of a storm in a, in a small boat that, that can't really handle the storm and they are without Jesus. So when I think that we can, at least in my mind, we can relate to those circumstances. We, we can um, uh, recognize what it could be like or what it would be like to be in a dire situation and be without Jesus um, and, and be facing peril and be without Jesus and even if you're, you're, you're new in your walk with the Lord, new in your relationship with the Lord, um, having that assurance, having that confidence, having that, that, that closeness um, is, is like, like a baby um, in a swaddle. It's, it's like a baby with a pacifier. And so um, anyway, let's, let's continue to read. Um, I just said all of that because um, the Lord is ministering to us through this story um, about the importance of his closeness, about the importance of our relationship and walk with him. And we're seeing it um, uh, in reading um, our scripture and reading out of our Sunday school lesson this morning. And so uh, verse 24, the Sunday school book says, the boat was far from land near the middle of the lake. Um, and uh, if you read Mark 6, which is uh, the parallel to this, you'll, you'll um, get that detail. The book says the disciples' progress was hindered by wind that pushed against them, making their sails useless. As the wind picked up, the waves grew higher, threatening to capsize the boat. The vessel, vessel may have been taking on water faster than the disciples could bail it out. Disciples had been in similar danger before, also on the Sea of Galilee, and you can read about that in Matthew chapter 8. Um, and that, that's uh, in reference to our, our, our lesson to you about being delivered from fear. The Sunday School book says, but then Jesus was with them in the ship. Now they were alone, or at least they thought so. And so we see here what the disciples are facing. We see the turmoil that they're in. We see their circumstance. So Jesus is not there 
they're on a small boat they're in the middle of the ocean and the storm could capsize the boat um, and kill them all and so that's clear and, and and when we look at it I'm certain that there has been times and 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 if you haven't experienced it um, you haven't lived long enough but there will be times when it feels like it's dark you can't see you're in a boat in the middle of a storm that's could capsize your boat and kill you and everything else within a moment notice and it feels like Christ is not there that's real and, and I think that God is ministering the essence of, of the, this reality to us this morning so that we know how to respond so that we have that trust and not doubt and so let us go ahead let us continue on to our next set of verses Matthew chapter 14 verses 25 through 31 verse 25 reads shortly before dawn Jesus went out to them walking on the lake verse 26 when the disciples saw him walking on the lake they were terrified it's a ghost they said and cried out in fear verse 27 but Jesus immediately said to them take courage it is I don't be afraid verse 28 Lord if it's you Peter replied tell me to come to you on the water verse 29 come he said and Peter got down out of the boat walked on the water and came toward Jesus verse 30 but when he saw the wind he was afraid and began to sink cried out Lord save me verse 31 immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him you of little faith he said why did you doubt and we know that verse 31 this morning is our key verse and so I can recognize myself in this instance when 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 you're you're real with yourself and when you're real with um, your walk with the Lord and, and um, lack of understanding and, and doubt and, and lack of faith um, this becomes real but also in reading this account in reading this encounter I find hope I, I, I find encouragement I find a gratitude and a thankfulness to God that the Lord does in fact respond to us in our dire moments um, verse 31 said Jesus reached out his hand and caught him and and so let's read in our Sunday school lesson about verses 25 through 31 the Sunday school book says shortly before dawn was approximately 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. given how the Roman Empire divided the night into various watches at this time arrived excuse me as this time arrived the disciples had struggled for hours against the high waves they were exhausted and probably uncertain of their position on the lake after so long in the dark while they may have hoped for some act of deliverance we can speculate that at this point their hopes were fading if not gone all together I can I can I can relate I can relate I can relate um, the Sunday school book says in this desperate situation they saw Jesus doing the seemingly impossible walking on the water in the Exodus God had parted the waters of the Red Sea to allow his people to walk on dry land to escape their enemies and that you can read about it in Exodus 14 but here is an action without compare at the point of the disciples greatest exhaustion and hopelessness the Lord came to reassure and rescue let me read that again at the point of the disciples greatest exhaustion and hopelessness the Lord came to reassure and rescue 
thank you, Jesus, how hard it must have been for them to understand what they were seeing, to believe their own eyes. What, what I encourage us to take away from this morning, not only the, the human part of, of, of what's transpiring, but also, and most importantly, who God is in this encounter, what God represents for us in this encounter here, this is reminding us that in our place of greatest exhaustion, in our place of hopelessness, the Lord comes to reassure and rescue. And so be encouraged in the Lord. And um, that was specifically about uh, what the book shares with us about verse 25. Verse 26, the book says, add it. To the disciples, exhaustion and fear was a sight of what they believed to be a disembodied spirit. Surely a flesh and blood human could not be walking on water, never mind high waves in a storm in the middle of the night. Such a thing had never been done before. So there was no reason to interpret this sight as a physical, natural person. First a storm, now an apparition. And um, you can compare this account, Luke 24. Little wonder that they cried out for fear. They felt assaulted from both the physical and spiritual realms. And you grow to appreciate that. And I know for me personally, my walk with the Lord, uh, the things that I experience and the things that I encounter it's, it's these kinds of things, but at the same time, God is magnified um, in, in, a, in a, you know, at the time of, of, of our circumstances and our situations and our doubting, revealing our humanity and, and our weakest areas and our weakest points, God is still fully God. God is still amazing god is still a wonder and so let's see what the book shares with us specifically about about verse 27. our sunday school lesson says jesus did not delay in revealing to the disciples the holy unexpected truth they were seeing not a disembodied spirit but their lord therefore they could take courage in the midst of the storm there was no more reason to be fearful of the storm that continued and certainly no reason to fear the one who walked on the water to join them. The two commands take courage and don't be afraid or two sides of the same coin. The first is a positive command of how to respond. The other is a negative command of how not to respond. God was doing extraordinary unexpected things, things that caused even the most faithful to fear. But those extraordinary things were intended as blessings, not threats. Let me read that again. God was doing extraordinary, unprecedented things, things that caused even the most faithful to fear. But those extraordinary things were intended as blessings not threats. And that's our God. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of relationship and walk and, and, uh, that we have with the Lord. The book says, after his resurrection, Jesus told the woman at the tomb, do not be afraid. And that's in Matthew 28. There, as here, Jesus' followers didn't understand how he could be present bodily with them. Yet Jesus' promise to all his followers is that he will be with them always to the end of this age, and that's in Matthew 28, 20. Fulfilling the ancient promise of God with us. The disciples might have felt that they were alone, but the Christ who would give his life for them would also remain with them in every circumstance, even when they could not recognize him. And so this is really rich. This is um, so encouraging because it doesn't matter uh, where you're at in your walk, in your relationship with the Lord, God is still going to be God. If you 
are doubting, God is still going to be God. If you are fearful, God is going to still be God. If you're in the midst of the storm on a boat in the middle of the night and you can't see and um, you you fear risking your life, God is still going to be God. And that's what the Lord, I believe, is ministering to us and reminding us about who he is and what he provides for us in our life and in our relationship and our walk with him. Let's continue reading. Let's see what the Sunday school lesson reveals with us specifically about verse 28. The story now shifts to one disciple's reaction to Jesus' self-revelation. Peter, what will come to be characteristic boldness? He spoke up, Peter spoke up, and he said, if it's you, um, this does not express doubt. We might think of it as meaning because it is you. And, and um, that's something to ponder. We might wonder why Peter asked for what he does. This bold request was not about thrill-seeking. Rather, Peter wanted to share what his master was doing. Already, Jesus had sent the disciples out to preach with authority to heal and cast out demons. They were sharing in his ministry, and they desired to reign with him. So Peter sought to walk with Jesus on the water by Jesus' power, following him as a disciple would. The word translated tell has the force of a command here and as translated elsewhere in various ways like Matthew 8 and Matthew 14, 9 and Matthew 19, etc. As used here, Peter invited Jesus to command him, Peter to come. Peter's request was the product of an ambitious, but it was a sacred ambition to stand with his Lord in the Lord's work. I want to read that again. Peter's request was a product of an ambition, but it was a sacred ambition to stand with his Lord in the Lord's work. When you have experienced so many signs and wonders, when you have experienced and I witnessed so many miraculous works from the Lord. You can't help but to reach for more. You can't help but to um, want to fully embrace all of who God is. And so here, this is reminding us that Peter had an ambition, but it's identified as a sacred ambition because he wanted to be with the Lord and, and, um, the other revelation that the Lord has has uh, uh, reminded me of as it pertains to this account is, is and, and I don't want to miss it, but I do want to uh, uh, share this, is that the word tell, um, the Sunday school book says, has the force of a command. And the Sunday school book says here as translated elsewhere in various ways. As used here, Peter invited Jesus to command him to come. And so in our walk and in our relationship with the Lord, we may be led to invite Jesus to command us to raise the dead. We may be um, um, invited or, or, or have what they call a sacred ambition to invite the Lord to use us to heal the sick and, and to, to cause the lame to walk and cause the blind man to see. And, and when, we, when we think about the essence of what this lesson is ministering to us, um, that's another aspect. This morning we're studying about being rescued from doubt. But when we get through that and, and we grow in our faith and the Lord um, increases our faith, um, we can see and we can recognize what the book, um, our Sunday School Lesson, reminds us uh, as sacred ambition. And so don't be afraid, amen, of that sacred ambition. Let the Lord use you. All right, so what our Sunday School Lesson shares with us specifically about verse 29. We're going to have to rush through this pretty quick. Jesus granted Peter's request. And just as had been the case before, when Jesus commanded his followers to do something, he also granted them the power to carry it out. So Peter stepped out of the boat and indeed 
walked on the water toward Jesus. Peter started faithfully. So far, so good. Verse 30, um, the Sunday school book reads, The same strong wind that had buffeted the boat also all night continued. As Peter made his way on the water, his situation seemed even more perilous than it was in the boat. The fear he felt before the Lord's appearance rose again. As it did, he could no longer walk on the water. Peter's doubt in the midst of the storm reveals that his confidence in Jesus could be shaken. Even when the disciples saw Jesus after his resurrection, doubt infected some of them. Doubt is a powerful, pervasive disposition, especially when faith is challenged in times of trouble. I want to read that again to remind us to stand firm in God and stand firm in the things of God. Doubt is a powerful, pervasive disposition, especially when faith is challenged in a time of trouble. Some would call what Peter was experiencing a failure of faith. But it was not a failure of faith to call out to Jesus to save him. Some would call, I'm going to reread it, what Peter was experiencing, a failure of faith. But it was not a failure of faith to call out to Jesus to save him. You're facing something much bigger than you are. Or you know someone who's facing something much bigger than you are. You're in a situation where... It seems like there's no way out. You, it, it seems like that situation is going to overtake you. That situation may have appeared to have got the best of you. And, and you may be, as our Sunday school lesson reads, experiencing a failure of faith. But our Sunday school lesson is reminding us this morning that it was not and it is not a failure of faith to call out to Jesus to save you. And so you're in something you, you can't reach. You can't reach out to someone to pray with you or pray for you. Um, and, and, you know, you feel like your circumstance, your situation is overtaking you. Here, our Sunday school lesson, this Sunday school hour is encouraging you to allow your faith, the little bit that you have left, the little bit that you have to muster up, to call out to Jesus to save you. And so wherever you are, whatever you got going on, may the Lord God encourage you, may the Lord God enrich you, may the Lord God empower you to call on him to save you. Um, and um, as we see in, in our lesson, in our, our scripture reading this morning, that's the kind of God we serve. That's what he does. That's his nature. That's his character. That's the fulfillment of his promise here in heaven and in earth. And so just as the disciples had called out, save us, when they had been in a storm before, Peter did so again. And um, God is telling us and showing us how to do and what to do. Um, because this life doesn't stop. The circumstances and situations don't stop. But God is empowering us in and by his word to stand firm in who God is and what God does. So the Sunday school lesson says, This desperate cry stripped of all self-reliance and pride can be the essence of faith in Jesus, especially when that faith is troubled by doubt. To experience doubt or fear is not to have lost faith when we call out to the Lord for help. We act in faith, confessing our weakness and relying on the Lord's strength. Jesus pronounced blessing on those who were poor in spirit, meek, mourning, and hungry for righteousness, on those who have great need and who recognize their need. When we experience fear and doubt, if our impulse is to pray, our faith is not failing, but acting. And that's important to remember. Let me read that again. When we experience fear and doubt, if our impulse is to pray, our faith is not failing, but acting. Again, be encouraged in the Lord. All right. This is what um, our Sunday school lesson shares with us about verse 31. As Jesus did on 
other occasions, he made physical contact with the one whom he delivered. Even so, Jesus chided Peter for his doubt, as he had previously when the disciples were afraid in a storm. Peter and the others had had enough experience of Jesus' power and faithfulness to be freed from doubt. But to say there was no good reason for their doubt is not to say that Jesus rejected them because of it. Instead, he delivered them. When we are guilty of inadequate faith, we can, we can remember that Jesus did in the passage before us. Yes, Peter's faith was weak. Under stress, he was plagued by doubt. But Jesus rescued Peter anyway. Peter's faith was still sufficient to call out to Jesus for help. Our relationship with Jesus depends on how ready we are to recognize our weakness and rely on his strength. That extends to trusting that in his strength, he can overcome our doubts and worries. So that takes us to our very last verses, verse 32 and verse 33. Matthew 14, verse 32 reads, And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Verse 33, Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. I sent a school lesson shared with us specifically about these two verses. This storm ended, as the early one had, as an immediate response from nature to an act from nature's creator. We note that Jesus did not rescue Peter by calming the storm, as in Matthew 8, 26. Rather, Jesus rescued Peter while the storm still raged. The storm disappeared only after they climbed into the boat. Jesus does not always calm the storms of life but he is always there to rescue or calm us in one way or another. Surely, we like Peter and the other disciples in the boat have enough reason to trust Jesus. What God has revealed to us about the Son is true and trustworthy. Ample reason for confidence. Verse 33, the Sunday School book shares, the disciples had just witnessed Jesus demonstrate power available only to God. They saw him empower one of their number to join him in his sovereign control of the deep. As they were reunited with their master, they worshiped him, acknowledging his authority and expressing their submission and dependence. They could conclude nothing less than that Jesus was utterly unlike any other. For the Jewish people of Jesus' time, the phrase, Son of God, first meant that Jesus was God's promised King, the great Son of David. Certainly the disciples were affirming at least that much here. Jesus showed his kingly authority in what he had just done. After Jesus' resurrection, Jesus' followers called him Son of God with an enhanced understanding. With this phrase, they affirmed him to be both God's king and as God himself. I always like to, and I'm going to take a few seconds to read what our Sunday school shares with us to conclude our lesson. And then um, I'm going to read um, our Sunday school prayer. I, I really think that the prayer that we have this morning um, is encouragement. And it's um, a, a prayer that covers what we studied this morning about being rescued from doubt. And so our conclusion in the book says, Peter sometimes said and did impressive things. Today's text shows Peter doing something remarkable during a crisis of faith. When he began to doubt, he almost snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. Peter had a problem with consistency, but Peter is not the most important character in this story. Jesus is. Jesus' power was greater than Peter's doubt, just as it is greater than our doubts. Trusting the Lord, whom we do not see, is hard to maintain when the negative things we do see test our faith. The resulting doubt is the proof that our faith is being tested. Is doubt then a synonym of inconsistent faith? It can be if it is never resolved if it leads us to abandon our hope and trust in Christ. But if doubt promotes us to call out to the Lord for help, then doubt 
is a seeking faith. Faith that seeks understanding. Faith that seeks the divine word of peace in the middle of fear. When you experience doubt, did you call out to the Lord? Perhaps you are crying out for help right now. You can now, excuse me, you can know that the Lord hears you and that the certainty of his faithfulness is more important than the size of your faith. I want to read that again. You know that the Lord hears you and that the certainty of his faithfulness is more important than the size of your faith. Or maybe your boat is sailing smoothly right now and you barely think about the Lord's not being in the boat with you. Realize that a time will come when the winds will blow against you at night. And though it may seem that you are alone on the waves, the Lord knows your distress and will come to you if you bid him do so. Remember, he is with you right now as well. He is always with his people to the end of the age. And here's our prayer. Father, thank you, Father, for your almighty power at work in Jesus to save and protect us. We affirm his promise not to abandon us, that even when we die, we live with you. Direct our hearts to you whenever life makes us afraid. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love this lesson. I love how the Lord ministered uh, the essence and the richness of this lesson to us this morning. For the sake of time, we're going to go through this really quick. As always, you all know that I like to capture some photos and these are our photos this morning. We have a depiction of Jesus walking on the water down here, bottom left. And up at the top, we have a depiction of the disciples in the boat and Jesus walking on the water towards them. And we can see how they would uh, um, be afraid and thinking that um, that was a, a, a spirit. Um, but, um, and it was dark, so we can see how... Uh, and I like this depiction because it, because it gives us um, an eye view of what the disciples may have been uh, seeing. And then the bottom right, this is a, a depiction of Peter walking on the water and Jesus rescuing him for his doubt. This was an amazing lesson for us this morning. This was an enriching lesson for us this morning. And that takes us to our activity pages. We are on lesson four, Rescue from Doubt. So our activity page, part one, tells us true, false, and when. Draw a line through every false statement about today's text of Matthew 14. Then put the remaining statements in the correct chronological order as told in the Bible story. So the answer is... Uh, the false statements is line one, line three, line four, line five, line seven, line eight, line nine, and line 12. So that leaves only the true statements. Now, in order to put the true statements in order, the true statements will be, and this is in chronological order, line two, line six, line 10, line 13, and then line 11. So those are our answers for part one of our activity page. And um, if you haven't completed this, you can in your um, uh, spare time, go ahead and go through this. It's very fun and it's uh, very enriching too. Um, and it helps you to learn God's word and, and um, make sure that you know, know God's word in the right order. All right, so part two of our activity page, I just don't get it. Here's the instructions. It says for us to compare and contrast the disciples' faith strengthening in Matthew 14 and the cautious discipleship on the parts of Nicodemus in John 3 and Joseph of Arimathea in John 19. How do we account for the fact that the original disciples became fearful after the crucifixion? while Nicodemus and Joseph became bold. And you can read about that in Matthew 27, Mark 15, and John 19. 
what I did real briefly, and of course, the answers are going to vary. Your answers may be different the way that you express or, or provide the answers to part two. But what I did was I just captured the verses. So Matthew 14, 33 reads, Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. And so when we, when we look at um, how we can compare and contrast, having the verse in front of us will help us to uh, properly identify what was transpiring. And so specifically, and that was for uh, um, 1433. Now, uh, what was Nicodemus's response? And that's in John 3. I, I didn't capture all the verses. I just captured verse 4. Um, John 3, verse 4, as it pertains to Nicodemus, says, How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked, Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. We understand what uh, conversation and what situation Nicodemus um, is having with Jesus. And also, uh, we'll come to know that Nicodemus came into faith because of that encounter. And um, his question, his, his, his doubt, his confusion was resolved in this conversation with Christ. And so um, because of that, um, that, that added to, I believe, him becoming bold um, while uh, Christ's disciples are were uh, fearful um, after the crucifixion. That takes us to Joseph, and that's John 19, 38, and it reads later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. So we understand that those two men didn't have any fear uh, because they weren't under the radar. And so when I thought about the verses that we read, when I thought about how it pertains to um, our scripture text in Matthew 14, my response was, and of course your answer will vary, your answer may be different. The 12 disciples were at high risk because of their relationship to Jesus. It is understood that Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea were under the radar. So they weren't, um, they didn't have a target on their back at that time. They didn't, they weren't being uh, uh, threatened. Their life wasn't being in, threatened because of their relation or intimate relationship with Jesus. So they had the liberty to be bold, whereas the disciples were fearful after the crucifixion because they know that the authorities were after them. The authorities wanted to destroy them. The authorities wanted to take their life and, and stop um, uh, uh, the gospel message uh, from going forward. And so that was our activity uh, as it pertains to lesson four. Uh, very enriching, very encouraging. Um, as a recap, we were able to identify common elements between the lesson text rescue from doubt, and that of lesson two, delivered from fear. We were able to explain the relationship in our reading from the Sunday School book uh, between fear and doubt. So our Sunday School reading helped, uh, helped us do that. And so this week, in our personal time and in our, in our quiet time, we want to develop a step-by-step -step plan to replace doubt with trust in one area of spiritual weakness. And so what I want to remind us of and we're already past the hour, um, and we're going to go ahead and close out, is that um, as we study God's Word and as we experience what the Lord is ministering to us here in the Sunday School Hour, there will be opportunity. There is always opportunity for doubt versus trust to be tested and, and, and for us to um, have some resolve in in what the Lord is ministering to us, not only through our Sunday school hour, but also in his word, in our prayer time, in our devotional time. And that's, as we learned in our Sunday school hour, that's because the Lord wants to enrich our faith. That's because the Lord wants to mature us. And um, he wants us to get it right in him, through him, by him, and for him. And so we're able to uh, 
recap our lesson aims. Next week, we will be studying the title of our, our, our Sunday School Hour next week. In the month of July, the first Sunday in July, is Attitude of Gratitude. Our devotional reading for this week is Isaiah 56, verses 1 through 8. Our background scripture for our Sunday School lesson next week is coming from Leviticus, chapter 13 and chapter 14. Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 16, and Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Our key verse next week is coming from Luke 17, 15, which reads, One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. And so I'm excited about what the Lord will minister to us next Sunday during our Sunday School Hour. Um, I'm, I know it's going to be enriching for our soul. Amen. All right. So um, I always take a few minutes before we go into our closing prayer to share about our schedule. So every Thursday evening at 730, we have our midweek Bible study. We are entering a new month this Thursday. And so we're shifting into a new series. We're shifting into a new focus. This month, we're going to learn and we're going to glean as much as we can about what the Bible teaches us about freedom and about being free, free in our minds, free in our hearts, free in our souls, um, what it means to be free in Christ, what it means to be free in the spirit. And so I'm excited about these next few weeks in our midweek Bible study, what the Lord is going to be ministering to us. Our end of month worship will be on Sunday, July 18th. And so what that means for us, we'll have our Sunday school hour at 10 and directly after that, we'll go into our um, end of month worship at 1130. Of course, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. we will have our Sunday school hour. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and close out with a word of prayer. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you, Lord. We thank you for being our God. We thank you for your rescue um, uh, from doubt. We thank you, Father, for building up um, our relationship and our walk with you and making us strong in who you are and, and your nature and your person and your character. Continue to reveal the fullness of who you are in our life. Continue to reveal the fullness of who you are in our walk and our relationships and our encounters and all that we are and all that we do. We thank you for this lesson this morning, Lord God. Let it not be far from us, but God, let us walk in what honors you. Let us walk in what pleases you. Cause us to trust more, Lord God. Cause us to, to, to um, understand and recognize the essence of what it means to trust in the Lord and trust in who you are and trust in what your word says. Father, as we leave from the Sunday school hour, go with us, go before us on every hand and on every side and every area and every circumstance. Be with us, oh dear God. And as we leave from this place, but never ever from your presence, we lift up this time to you, Lord God. We thank you for this time. And we honor you, we love you, we bless you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You all have a blessed rest of your Sunday. May the Lord continue to enrich you and make you strong in the Lord. May the Lord continue to anoint and bless your week. And I will see you all 7.30 p.m. this Thursday for our midweek Bible study. Thank you all. God bless and have a wonderful, wonderful anointed uh, rest of your day.